Well, I finally got my hands on an Ice Giant Pro Siphon Elite. So if you want to know what comes in the box, how to install it properly, you're not going to want to miss this episode. Today, we're going to do an unboxing and we're going to do an install. Just so you can see how to properly install it because there's actually a certain way you have to install this for it to work properly. It's a cooler type, air-cooled, gravity-driven, two-phase. For the socket compatibility, here you go, right here somewhere. We're gonna put all the sockets up for you. It comes with 420 millimeter PWM, 2300 RPM fans. So we get four of them in this box. Thermal paste, so it comes with one gram syringe of Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. It's 164 millimeters by 251 millimeters by 103 millimeters. As you can see, the box is completely blacked out, matte black with regular paint, the little logo here of Ice Giant. You could barely even see the logo. And then right here, it has it again, right across the top, Ice Giant Pro Siphon Elite. On the back, you got some white, finally, some Ice Giant Pro Siphon Elite, AMD Ryzen Threadripper, AMD Ryzen Thermal Grizzly. Again, it fits Intel too, so if you have an Intel CPU, make sure if it's compatible with one of those sockets that popped up, or I'll put them up again here for you. Before you purchase this, you're gonna wanna make sure this thing will fit your your case if you have an open bench well obviously you're fine let's open it up and let's see what comes exactly inside of this box i am really excited because i've been wanting this thing for a while okay here we go so it's in there pretty good it's got some hard foam here i love the aesthetic of the top it's got this beautiful blue with their logo it says ice giant across the top here this was on the bottom, so we got very good packaging. This stuff is very thick. So here's your installation guide. If you lost any documentation at the end of the video, I will slowly go through each page and you guys could screenshot it or whatever. Cool matte blackish sticker thingy, nice. So here's our mounting accessories. Intel, Intel, probably some other things in there. I believe this is for, yeah, AMD. Yeah, this stuff is really thick, dude. It, it's really good stuff. Let's see what's in this box. It's got a green dot up in the corner. So inside the white box with the green dot is your other two fans. These are very nice fans. I really do like the logo of Ice Giant. And here she is. So here's the first two fans. These are already installed on your Ice Giant when you receive it. So if you notice, these are already in a pull config and they're in that way for a reason. We'll get to that later. Damn, this thing is massive. Look at that. So this is everything that matters that comes inside the box. And to tell you the truth, I see AIOs come with a lot more than this. So you're gonna have a Ziploc baggie inside of the bag with the uh, TR4 mounting accessories. The see how it says AM4, so if you're on AMD, this is yours. Put that there, because that, well, that's us. Then you said that one right there, TR4 and all that, that's for Threadripper. We're not gonna need that. And this bag that has no markings on it whatsoever, well, it's pretty obvious what these are. These are the screws for your fans into the Pro Siphon Elite. These are two we're definitely going to need. So make sure you get the baggie that says AM4, the baggie that has nothing but these really long uh, Phillips head long black screws. And this really long Allen. Our thermal compounds in this bag right here. This is a spreader for thermal paste. So you may want to do that because the mounting here looks like just two bolts, one on either side. So I don't feel you would get a good coverage of the thermal paste. Usually four is what you want. So you could crisscross and, you know, make sure it gets a, this here. You may want to use it. We're gonna throw this on this X570 um, Steel Legend from ASRock. But the CPU is not a big deal. I, it is not a matter of the CPU. We're not checking thermals today. This is an unbox and how to install. We'll do a thermal thing on the next video where I'll be putting it against some AIOs and coolers that I do own. So you're gonna need your original backplate to your motherboard. Every AMD motherboard will come with a backplate. So you're gonna need to remove the retention brackets. They have two. Phillips screws on either side. Remove bolts to take these off. 
You don't need these. Put them back in the motherboard box. I know it doesn't look like much, but there's some good room over here for your, uh, your RAM. It clears them perfectly fine. So the Corsair Vengeance Pros and the G-Skill Trident has no clearance issues. And these ones are pretty tall. So you can find the uh, height online of how tall they are. So when you check the ones you want to buy, if you're going with the Ice Giant. I'm going with these because they match the aesthetic of the board more. So here you're going to need this now, this bag that says for your socket specifically, AMD AM4. So you should have four spacers in this bag and four screws. Now your back plate is going to be there and you're going to need this. You need this for the mounting. So it's saying to put your thermal paste on now. So we're gonna use the thermal paste they gave us and I'm gonna show you how to apply it using the uh, little spatula. So what we're going to do now is put us a nice little line going across like this. So we used more than half of it, if not half of it on that one spread. You're gonna wanna cover the entire IHS. I don't wanna see any silver. I don't wanna be able to read the Ryzen logo. Do not pick this up really fast and go different ways because you may have strings hanging and it'll go all over your motherboard. It's probably not conductive, but still don't do that. So take your time here and just cover the entire IHS. So this part's gonna be a little tricky, especially if you're by yourself. Your back plate needs to go in. If you got the tape, use masking tape to tape it somewhere in the back of the motherboard to hold it. Get a friend's help. See that weird shape at the top? Yeah, you want those up. So, we're gonna put four of those in the same ways. Fat end down. These are being held by the back plate sticking up through the motherboard. Then you're going to take the retention bracket and you're going to place it on top of that. Now, remember how the uh, those spacers had those that, that thin top head look like a cone? Well, believe it or not, they went into little channels that are going to hold them. We're going to take the screws that were in the same bag and we're going to just screw them in. Don't go too tight. Just go till they stop or something like that. I just want to get them in to hold so that way I can let go of the back of the plate. Now, once you got them in just enough where they're holding the back plate, you can get this tool now. This is that weird looking Allen. Well, on the bottom of that Allen, it's got a Phillips. This Phillips is exactly the size for these screws. So you're going to want to tighten them in snug, not over tight, just snug. So let's go like this. There you go. It only could go on two ways properly because it could cause damage to your CPU and other junk like that. So this would be called the evaporation chamber and this is the condenser. So you want to keep this above. Easy way to tell is the logo. You see the logo? If this is your computer and it's put in your computer, hopefully you're doing this outside, it would go like this. So that way the ice giant logo, if you're looking at your computer, would be facing you and you could read it left to right. If it's sitting on a test bench like this, it could go like this, no problem. And make sure on the bottom, you're gonna see this thing right here. We're gonna peel that off. And we are now going to place it on like so. Now remember, this thing is top heavy, so it may go in a weird direction, so you're gonna wanna hold it. So now we're gonna take this and we are going to do five, six turns on that one. Five, six turns on that one. We're holding it still to make sure we're getting even pressure. So I'm gonna put a little bit of pressure this way to make sure that that's actually getting in there. We're gonna go a few on each. Keep alternating. Oh, that one stopped. That one stopped. So now that they're fully stopped, it's good. They're on. They completely stopped. You can't go any tighter. Now look, it's on there. So that's how your logo should look with your motherboard.
We want the pretty side of our fan. For our CPU fan header on our motherboard is behind the ice giant up and to the right. So we know these wires are over here. What you could do is run these around to the back of your uh, motherboard uh, tray where your eight pin EPS would come, your CPU connection, eight pin, four, 12, whatever it is. Run this through the same way out the back. Might help you with some cable management. So you're gonna get the fans, these new ones, and we're gonna want the pretty side the pretty side and we're gonna want these cables going in the same direction as these cables so they're not so noticeable so we're probably gonna put it like this so they can come out through here you shouldn't need a, an extra splitter they come with another splitter if needed remember that in that baggie that had those long black screws we're gonna take those now and we're gonna install these fans like this into our motherboard oh, into our motherboard <laughs> into our ice giant So this is the other side of your motherboard, the top half. These are your uh, CPU uh, EPS connections here. So what I'm gonna show you now is how to do your daisy chain to get this all these wires down to just one wire that will go in your CPU fan header. Make sure to plug this there. This way the BIOS or whatever monitoring software you're using can uh, adjust the fans as needed. Now the two fans that were pre-installed, this would look like this, this would be facing the top of your case. The other fans would be the pretty sides. This would draw air this way. The installed fans that were already on here, they'll already be daisy chained together. So you'll have this guy by itself, be the only one not connected. So you're gonna wanna do the same thing on your two new fans. So one of the fans should have a extra wire coming out. The other fan should have one. So take the one, and these are channeled so they can only go one way, and put it in. Now you only have this one. So you have these two. Well, they don't go together. Well, what do we do now? Well, we're going to take that splitter they gave us, and on one end of the splitter, you're going to notice these two big guys and the one single. So we're going to take one of the big ones, and this one, the small one, and again, they're channeled. We're going to put that one in here like this all the way in and then same with the other big one with the other fans they're channeled right here that little lip slide in and now you only got one wire left and go in your cpu fan header mine's is right here so let's get the rest of our components and let's start this thing up okay so the motherboard is completely put together just some quick things to tell you guys the 24 pin was really hard to get to underneath that. So if you have a fully modular power supply or even whatever, you're gonna wanna put that in before you put the ice giant in. Any wires, pay attention to your motherboard that you're gonna be using that's gonna get covered by this. Connect those wires before you put the ice giant on your motherboard. So you're gonna wanna mostly do this thing outside the case. Motherboard's lit up. So we're in the BIOS, hardware monitor, there we go. Let's get to that real fast. Our CPU is at 30.5C, that's 86.9 freedom units. CPU fan speed. So those are our four fans. They're reporting at one RPM because they're connected together. So we're only gonna get one speed. You don't have your uh, your back plate notify them that's pretty cool it looks like they produced a quality product here inside the box I liked how everything was packed in that foam foam was very very thick that way you don't have to worry about anything being damaged I really liked that in the packaging was everything you needed for Intel AMD Threadripper AM4 it even came with its own uh, screwdriver that way if you're trying to get in from far up you can it was good that they didn't have these fans pre-installed because we wouldn't be able to get to those bolts. So pretty cool with that screwdriver. Everything was packaged in an easily identifiable box or Ziploc bag or whatever. You knew what those parts are for. I find installation of this pretty simple. You know, just uh, you're using the original back plate. You got a couple of uh, standoffs, a big bracket, four screws, throw this on top, tighten those down, put on your fans. 
I liked it, the mounting style of this cooler. It was very good. It was very easy to understand how to install this. If you have a modular power supply, which means all the wires are separate from the power supply, they're not already connected in, you should put your 24 pin, your A pin EPS, your CPU cables on first, then run those through your case, have them already on your motherboard before you put this guy on. Because if you try to put these on while this is in the case, you will not be able to get to that. And it was hard for me to get it in these. So if you're doing this inside of a case, no, you won't be able to. You're gonna have to take everything out and do it from the outside and then do it again like this. But if you have a modular or fully modular power supply, you can just plug those in. Don't plug them into the power supply, just into the motherboard and then just scoot them around and put them behind the, the tray and what have you. Uh, you're gonna wanna put the CPU fan header in first also. A uh, majority of motherboards, they're usually at the top of the motherboard. So it could be pretty difficult to get to that especially if this is going into a case. So just make sure you put those in before you install the ice giant because that's exactly what it is. It's a giant. This isn't a cooler that should be put onto a system that you're gonna want RGB. You may have did some mods to your case unless those mods match a black and blue aesthetic. When I say blue, just that one symbol of the ice giant. Aesthetically, I like this ice giant cooler style i like that it's mostly matte black with just that little bit of really nice blue color that it's got with their logo if you're going for an rgb and all that look then yeah you can get some rgb fans i would definitely advise you to get a uh, static pressure fans something that's optimized for radiators though for this because you're gonna want them to reach 22, 2300 RPM. If you go regular fans, you're not gonna get the benefits of this cooler. So if you plan to RGB it for some reason, you know what? If you guys would like to see that, if you'd like to see me RGB this, put this in a case, comment down below, let me know, and I will do something with this and see what kind of RGB look we could get with this. So again, if you'd like to see that, comment down below. So before we go and we do the page for page so you guys could screenshot whatever you need for the manual, if you need that for Intel because we didn't do that or Threadripper, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, do one or the other or do both. Those things will not cost you a dollar, not a dime. They're free. I'm very thankful for every subscriber we have. I'm thankful for all the comments. I'm thankful for all the likes and I'll see you guys on the next one. Late.